That said, Giovanni, a lot of things are happening. Do you already know that I like to always start with a little intro about our dear friend Bitcoin, about what is happening in the ecosystem, and especially this month of September, which I believe has had, well, a series of important issues to highlight for the future of everything that Bitcoin represents, especially from the more traditional side, which is very important for all of you here who are also wondering, hey, when is this going to start going up? Where are you going to go? And what about this kind of issue? What things have happened or what can we highlight? Well, mainly the approval. You know that in January, the famous ETFs were approved, which is that product, that vehicle that allows large assets to have direct exposure to the asset. These funds, BlackRock and Fidelity, which manage so much, so much money from third parties, ultimately buy Bitcoin on the spot, which means actual physical Bitcoin. Well, it seems to me that BlackRock, the last figure I saw, had already bought 350,000 and Fidelity about 175,001 barbarity. But this month, uh, they approved the SEC last week, a product regarding those BlackRock ETFs. What product? To make ourselves clear, it is called options. Options are basically a product that reduces volatility, which often makes this type of investor a bit uneasy because they think, damn, for me, the fact that it could drop 80% at a certain moment is concerning. If it rises and they have it, it's fantastic that it goes up 101%, 200%, or even 500%. But for them, it is important to have a tool that minimizes the risk of volatility, and that is the approval of options, specifically a beep, which is the ticker, the label that BlackRock's fund has. So, what does that allow them to do? Well, it allows them to place put and call orders for three months, months, or a year, in other words, they can buy positions that do not obligate them to buy at a price or sell at a price, and that reduces volatility. And why does that matter to us? Because what this will do is further increase the liquidity that will enter the market. And this, if we look at gold or other types of assets, has always been tremendously positive and favorable for the development of the market and the business around, in this case, Bitcoin. As you know, the Ethereum ETFs have also been approved, but this tool has not yet been approved, and the Ethereum ETFs are not doing uh, so well. I'm not going to give much support to Ethereum because, you see, there was a debate this weekend at an event that we will discuss later from Watch Out Bitcoin, where they debated proof of stake and proof of work. The truth is, it was very interesting, and what Jesus Perez and others on the panel said is that in the end, we are all in the same boat for decentralization. But it is true that those of us who believe in Bitcoin have that flag above all other cryptocurrencies. One more thing that has happened, which I think is also important to highlight, is the topic of the SEC approval, which is the U.S. regulator. As you know, for a traditional bank, in this case BN, which is BNY Mellon, to give you an idea, it is the oldest bank in New York, founded in the late 17th century, around 1780. Well, this gigantic bank is going to start being able to custody Bitcoin directly from its clients, which means we are also seeing an interest from traditional companies and bank funds to have direct exposure and work with this asset that's also very good news for those of you who are, well, into medium-term Bitcoin compositions. And sometimes Giovanni tells me, damn, Javi, you always talk about Bitcoin and there are people who might have other cryptocurrencies and enjoy listening. I share this with you because I believe it is the most relevant thing happening right now. It is true that there is development and many cryptocurrencies. We, in fact, the Launchpad, which we will discuss, have just listed a new project and we are continuing to work on that. And that is why we have more than 250. But I do believe that the things happening to Bitcoin and to the world of crypto assets in general, are historic. And to finish, if you want, Jose, let's bring up the table we were discussing earlier, which I think is quite illustrative of where we currently stand in the market. And basically, if you have it on screen, let me know. I believe you do. This table shows that on the left side, in the left column, you have all the years, okay? Since 2013, year by year in rows, what has been the behavior of the columns, which basically the top part shows the months, whether it has been positive or negative. Well, the green squares clearly represent months in which the price has behaved positively and the red ones indicate negative behavior. So if we go to, as you can see in the upper right corner, there are three small black dots. These three black dots refer to the 2024 20, row, which is this year. And if you notice, we are closing the month of September 30th today and we are experiencing an increase of approximately 9%. Historically, we had a behavior uh, that was not very positive at first. We have had 14 years, and out of those 14 years, nine have been in the red, eight have been in the red, and the ones that have been in the green have not been very strong. But look at what to focus on. 
next month. Now, this is not investment advice. We always make the disclaimer, as you know. But look at October. If we go to the column, we can see the behavior it has had year after year. And specifically, we would now be in the year, as you all know, of the halving. Well, the year of the previous halving was 2020, when we had a 27.7% increase. In 2016, we had a 14.71% increase. And in 2013, a 60% increase. But let's be clear. Yo. What this chart wants to show is that despite September historically being a negative month, we have had it in the green this year with everything that is happening. And the next three months have historically been the best quarter of the year. Let's see what happens this year. We are all also looking forward to the elections in the U.S. on November 5th. If Trump wins, I believe he will have a very positive behavior in the short term. If Kamala wins, it may not be as positive in the short term because she is not as aligned with that pro-Bitcoin legislation discourse in the U.S. But in the medium term, since it is one of the policies that both will implement, it will ultimately lead to debt expansion and an increase in the deficit, spending what they do not have on pure, infinite and scarce assets like Bitcoin, which will be very beneficial for them. So I think this picture is important to keep in mind for all of you who are positioned. You might have been a bit bored since March of this year when we hit the maximum of 74, so a little bit too. Base ourselves on history regarding what might be coming. I don't know, Giovanni, what do you think? But I see it as quite, quite beautiful, don't you?